No. Why did you do that? This means war. That is the worst picture of me ever. I don't know why they chose that one. There were so many ones after that one. All right. It is my fault. That is true. I think that was my wife that said that. All right, so Mr. Miller is about to tell us who won the House of the Month. There's a couple things I want to, to talk through. Hold up. What are we doing? So uh, first, remember, we're doing our canned food drive November 1st through the 18th. Don't miss this opportunity. One, it's a competition, but that should not be what matters. The fact of the matter is that we should be wanting to provide for people who need uh, Thanksgiving help to have a good Thanksgiving. And so you guys should want to do that. But don't forget, all the drop-offs are by my office. Uh, and then the t-shirt sale, too. Uh, and without further ado, Mr. Miller is going to uh, announce the winner. You, you, you recognize this. 337 students. 337 students were recognized for doing something nice. Just something nice, that's a lot. Okay, these were collected every week. They were collected and counted. And at the end of the month, we tallied up, what's the nicest house for the month? Okay, house of the month. Uh, in sixth place, with 47 of these, was Mahara. In fifth place, with 49, very close, 49 was Fordham. In fourth place, Deshuri with 52. Okay, I know. In third place was Zavalon with 59. Okay, and now, right now, I need two house leaders, one from Revere and one from Servitas to come up here with me. Okay, I've got Revere, I need a Servitas. Okay, now we're down to these two houses, the house of the month. Okay, one house had 70, 70 of these, which is nice. One house had 60, okay? Now, the house with the most, the house with the most will actually receive next Tuesday, T-shirt Tuesday is next Tuesday, but next Tuesday, the house with the most gets to wear jeans or sweatpants on that day. Just, just as a nice treat, okay? So between these two houses, Revere and Servitas, with 70 points, Servitas is the house of the month. Do the drum roll, do the drum roll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can hold it. Hold it. Mr. Miller, you're going to pray? You're not going to pray? Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, we did an interesting reversal for you. I kept you on your feet. We did the drum roll after the reveal, so that was cool. I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. So everybody bow your heads with me. Uh, Father, thank you so much for uh, who we are according to you, God, that we're your children, that you give us a way to choose you and help us to love each other and choose you uh, throughout the day, choose to represent you well as we live our lives. And just thank you for all the participation and the, the nice things that people just did all throughout this last month. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So today, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm talking because Avonlea's sick, um, but we need to revisit Redeemed, right? That is our theme of the year, and what that is, is God gave us a way to be reunited with him and to experience true freedom found in Jesus. We've talked about that a lot. So instead of being in a prison, which is right here, that's the picture of a prison, uh, we get to experience life at a like in, to the fullest in him. But this whole quarter has been talk to, talking about what do we sell ourselves to even though we're redeemed? What are things that we chase after that actually puts us back in that prison cell? 
And so we've talked through many different things, and today's issue is something uh, that a lot of people may or may not even know that they sell themselves to, that they want, but it's this issue that comes with conflict and division. And some of you are like, we're going to do math in here. It's not long division, but that might scare you more than actual division. But it's division as in breaking apart people. That's the kind of division we're talking about real fast. All right? So Mrs. Barnett, one of her favorite stories for me to tell, I don't know why, uh, start with a concert that we went to together. And in the concert, we were just on a date, trying to have a good time. We're surrounded by people, and we're having, we're, we're having a good time. We're just, like, loving it, uh, being with each other, just, like, listening to music. It's good. Uh, the people right in front of us, not so much. They're not having a good time. They're actually arguing the whole time. And throughout the concert, they're getting progressively louder to the point where you can hear them over the music. And as they get progressively louder arguing, I get progressively more tense. And Mrs. Barnett has to like put her hand on my arm to be like, hey, chill. Okay, I'm trying. And then, a little bit further along, the boyfriend gets up turns to his girlfriend and starts doing this and screaming at her. And at that point, Mrs. Barnett takes her arm, or takes her hand off my arm. She's like, pretty much, hey, go ahead. And so as I get up to pull him back down to his seat, he actually like rears back his fist towards his girlfriend. So I pull him down into his seat, and I'm trying to hold him there, and I say, dude, you need to chill out. And then he starts to turn and try to punch me, and at that point, I put him in a headlock. Uh, just, no, no, no. Just trying to get him to calm down. I'm just trying to get him to calm down. And he doesn't calm down. He actually is still trying to hit me, but he's hit, trying to hit me like this, okay? <laughs> And eventually, everybody else is like looking at this, and they're pointing, and security comes down, and they, I let go. They take him out of the building. Everybody's like, he's fine, T talking about me. Like, this guy didn't do anything. And then at the end of the story, real weird, they gave me and Mrs. Barnett a round of applause for like, every, like the, the whole time. So that was very strange, right? But when we talk about conflicts, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. But conflict, I would say, between that boyfriend and girlfriend was not good. And I actually think there was ways that I could have done what happened between me and him better, too. But conflict literally just means a disagreement. It's not necessarily bad. Uh, there's healthy, healthy conflict. It looks like this. You know, people have differing opinions. They talk. They chill out. And they just kind of just say what's on their mind, and they just talk about it. But then there's conflict that is divisive, that leads to division, that is more like that. So that it's filled with hate, that it leads to division, that is more like this picture. Also, a side fact, is that guy jumping like that reminds me of Mr. O'Connell's skills in dodgeball last, like last week, because that was pretty impressive. In a tie, no less. OK? So there's ways to do conflict that's healthy, and the Bible spends a lot of time talking about what we should do as Christians about conflict that leads to division. Uh, and it's in Romans 16. Uh, Christians should be divided. If there's something that divides us, that's not great. So 17 starts out with, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause division and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you've learned. Keep away from them. So that means if there's a conflict that's leading to division, um, there's a loving way to have conflict and disagreements, and there's one that's hateful, that tears people apart, and that goes against the teachings that you've learned. And if you fall into the category of doing those things, that's really tough language to hear at the end of the verse. It says, keep away from them. Because the motive behind division, the divider's motive, 
is talked about in the next verse. 16, 18 says, For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. So it's self-serving. It may seem like it's for God. They might make it sound super pretty, but it's self-serving, just like the picture of the ice cream cone there. I thought that was really clever. It's probably not. But they try to deceive people with smooth talk and flattery, but really it's something that is filled with hate, laced with hate. And Mrs. Saunders, where's she at? Hi, Mrs. Saunders. She did a great job talking about social media last week or two weeks ago. Um, man, you're just uh, looking for an excuse to do applause today. So everything she said was spot on. And a lot of you all, I would say like 80% of you all know how I feel about social media, which is I don't like it. But only this section knows why, and only probably like two of you, because y'all's memory is sometimes not the best, uh, actually remember it from sixth grade. But the reason why I'm not about social media is because in 2020, when like the election was going on, every, the people I loved at my church uh, that were Christians who had different opinions did not represent God well when they were talking on social media uh, about the issues that they were talking about. So they were talking, and they were super hateful, super horrible to each other, and to non-Christians, and I knew that if I stayed on social media, that I'd get super sad by that, and I would, it would be really hard for me to love them and want to be around them, and I didn't want to lose that or those people in my lives, so I just cut it. I cut ties with it completely. And that's the biggest reason why I'm not on social media. But the internet, pretty divisive place. It's really easy to like, I, I've said it before and I'm using that, this language and so uh, you guys probably know, but it's really easy to be a coward and say whatever you want through a phone. But that's not the only place where div division is in the world, guys. There's a lot of division at our school that we can change. If comms is supposed to be a Christian community, then that means that we should be united, that we shouldn't let things be hateful and fester between us. But I can guarantee you, like, there's a ton of you all that I've talked to that somebody hurt you real bad and you hurt them back, or even teachers, someone hurt you and you hurt them back. And as Christ followers, like, as hard as it is, we're supposed to unite and not let things divide us. Because if we do that, then the devil wins. So the test, guys, is right here. And it's the last two verses. And it says, everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good. So knowing what's good and trying your best to do it. And innocent about what is evil. Staying away from that as best you can. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. So what that is saying is that what we should strive to do is to be united, not divided, and really consider our actions, whether they are uniting people, what we say and do, or dividing people, and whether we are representing God well. That's, that's literally the language it uses here. So the challenge today is that I, as we're closing, I want you to, and we're going to start uh, doing, like, singing and praising God and worship. Uh, I want you to pray and think about your words and actions throughout the day. Do they unite people? And if they don't, then I want you to pray for the strength to change that or the want to change that because a lot of y'all don't want to because it's tough to change things that you are doing, or I'm doing. We all fall victim to this every once in a while. So that's it. That's my little lesson. Um, uh, Nick is going to come on up. Uh, I have a really embarrassing uh, song from summer camp that's about these verses. Do you all want to hear it? 
I got a, I, a disclaimer, I am not him, right? So it's going to be bad. Do you guys still want to hear it? Yeah. All right, I need help then. And then he's going to take it away. Are you guys ready? You got to roll in this. So when I say Romans, you're going to say what? That's what you say. Not what, what do I say? It's what, right? So no, no. You say what? See, I knew this was going to be confusing. So I say Romans, you say 16, and then you say again. And then I say 19 says, and you say what, what? Can you handle that? All right, Romans 16, 19 says. Romans 16, 19 says. Be excellent in what is good. Do you know the song? Be innocent of evil. It's bad, right? Be excellent. Don't look at me, Catherine. In what is good, be innocent of evil. This is where it gets crazy. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan. Oh, Satan. <laughs> God will crush him. What? Underneath of your feet. Ugh. That's it. It's horrible. I know. All right, everybody. I don't know if we can top that. <clears throat> We're going to sing a couple songs together. If you guys know them, sing them aloud. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. we shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Because we were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven. Redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. Let's sing that one more time. Because we were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, let's get our hands up together. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Yeah. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. 
got some rhythm. I like it. We're going to sing one more song real fast before you have to go back to class. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. No, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And every war he wages, he will. No, I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story is Oh yes, I know how this story is I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, we believe that this morning. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Yes, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Yes, you turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. Yes, you turn it. Would you pray with me real quick? Father God, that's our prayer this morning. Um, God, you would take our circumstances. God, you would turn them for good. We thank you for your son. God, we pray that we would look more like him today. Um, God, as we see those around us uh, maybe involved in conflict, God, would you allow us to step in 
Um, and God, help point, point them back to you. Remind each other that we are a family. God, that we're unified. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, we have a dodgeball tournament this afternoon. Mahara versus Zavalon. All right, so we're going to the gym. Y'all are dismissed. Go ahead. Back to class. <laughs>